<laughs> I I will not run a game sounding like Daft Punk. Maybe. Maybe if We're I do going. if I do a cyberpunk game, maybe. So where are you going next? Around the world, around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Just repeating the same. Yeah, that actually works for this game. You just need to do it in like a 1920s style. There we go. All right. So we are live with uh, session 26 of uh, Masks, and, uh, Masks of the Harley Othotep. Um, you guys are in Shanghai trying to track down Jack Brady, the one individual who might be able to give you a clue as to what's going on. Uh, and it seems as though Mr. Brady is quite popular here in Shanghai. Um, there's been at least one attempt on his life. Somebody sent a hunting horror to a flower girl place that he was staying, killed a gentleman that was there, you know, wrong place, wrong time. And that hunting horror now seems to be hunting Evelyn. Uh, thankfully, it only comes out at night. Uh, and last night, Dr. Carter managed to erect a magical barrier that kept it at bay. Uh, and it's not a question of like, did the thing show up or not? It definitely showed up and it tried to get through the barrier and couldn't. Uh, but today... Earlier this morning, for breakfast, uh, you guys received an invitation to a woman named Lin Yen Yu. Uh, and the manner of the invitation was such that, in a very polite way, it indicated that saying no wasn't really an option. Uh, so you met with her. Um, she definitely seems to be a, a woman of means. Uh, and has let you know that she is also interested in finding not so much Mr. Brady, but a scroll that he stole from her. Uh, a scroll called the Seven Cryptical Books of Hassan. Uh, and she is willing to pay quite a bit of money for that scroll. Uh, the more scholarly amongst you know that this scroll is somehow tied into this uh, this mythology that you've been stumbling into ever since Peru. Uh, you're not entirely sure what it contains, but apparently it is highly prized. Uh, she also let you know that a gentleman named Ho Fang uh, is seeking Mr. Brady as well for the scroll. She was adamant that he not get it. Uh, apparently his methods are a little bit more circumspect. Uh, and she she let it be known that uh, Ho Fang has kidnapped Mr. Brady's girlfriend, uh, one of the flower girls. Um, and her thought is that he is simply going to let word get out that he has her and wait for Brady to come to him. She, she suggested that you wait for that to happen and take advantage of that situation. Uh, but how you actually do this, she doesn't really care. She doesn't care what happens to Jack. She doesn't care. There's no like kill him on site or anything. She's been very clear that all she cares about getting is the scroll. Uh, so when we left off, you guys had made it back to your hotel from Miss um, Lynn's place. Um, it's like just around lunchtime when you get back to the hotel. So you guys can decide what you would like to do. Wow. Well. I'm going to do you far too much. Um, so we're back at the hotel after that meeting? Yes. And approximately what time is it? Just around lunchtime. Okay. 
Oh. That's a part of our day gone since we we need to be safely back home at night. Am I the only one that find that this lady is probably up to no good? Who? Am I the only one assessing that this woman is up to no good? Oh no, she's definitely... No, I'm sure she's up to no good. She was quite evasive when we were... It looks like the Shanghai version of our um, spice lady. Mm. At this point, I would sit, I would venture to guess that almost anyone we deal with is going to have some level of unsavoriness to them. Yes. That's a sad um, analogy, but you're probably right. We can we can put our hand on Mr. Brady. We can inc inquire on why he wanted that scroll. It can inform us on what we do next. Do we know what we want to tackle today? We should try to find out more about this poor thing. Yes. So far we know we, he's dangerous, that he's dealing in antiquity, and he's the one that would receive the shipment from London that we were tracking. Yes. Need a bit more information about him without attracting too much of his attention. Even if I assume uh, our clumsiness has already attracted enough. And by that, I don't mean anything specific, just people seem to notice us. <laughs> well, I mean, we do stand out a bit in the local population. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that Mr. Sharp is probably the best able to find more information on mm -hmm. the thing. Simply because he knows which techniques to use. Yes. And how to theoretically get lost in a crowd. Not sure how well his techniques are going to work here, but Taking the pulse of the local uh, interlope situation might be further in his alley. Let's put it like that. Uh, we could always... Oh, sorry. Oh, that's over. I was just thinking, I was thinking about the other flower girl who took the room mm. and that is currently in the hospital after a client died. Maybe we should try to ask her a few questions. We could if we go ask her a few questions. Maybe she has insight. Maybe she knew the girl before they still worked together. Maybe she can help us. Well, most likely Ofeng as her, but the more we know about her, the better. Of course, we don't have... Well, we don't really know what the hospitals are like here. No. I have no idea. I assume they must be busy and... Uh, well, given the number of people being shot outside, yes, I think so. Yeah, that's where I was going with. And overcrowded. Quite possibly, yes.
Because so far we have Ofang. We have that girl. As a uh, Tails. We also have a other um, article that we found something amiss that we could check on. The, the 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 killing in the flower girl places was only the most recent. That's why we were we went there immediately. But uh, the place that was attacked by thing coming from the water could be of interest too. That's true. Oh, and there was a third one. That I'm... Yeah, there was a third one, but I'm I'm forgetting right now. Fire. Oh yes, um, the monk. Um... Hmm. The, the more problem. I hear about uh, stuff, the more I hear about this stuff, the more I believe it might have been Mister Brady. Um thinking some knowledge away from that place. Really? I might be seeing patterns where there are none, but... Ancient tradition of monk looked like the people who might have, like, the kind of books and knowledge that Mr. Brady seems to be gathering right now. True. They did mention that a European was seen leaving the vicinity. Yes. And he's the so, only one other than us that we know about. So there might be others. I mean, there's a full on um, <laughs> foreigner quarters, but I will assume that any yeah. knowledge based crime done by foreigner <laughs> will be linked to him in some way until proven otherwise. <laughs> That's why I'm not a detective. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure if that is a good thing or not, but <laughs> at at this point, it's not unreasonable. I mean, I, I would think. not go to investigate on old thing without uh, Mr. Sharp and no. just out of the blue. So those things seems interesting to investigate on, and um, I believe if we don't get closer to Mr. Brady before tonight. We'll need to protect because we don't know if that ours will show up against tonight. But I would try to maybe try to reach out to his dream. If we can't find him, maybe we can tell him we're here. And he can find us. How? Um. Sorry, you think we should try to reach out to Mr. Brady? How? Oh, through his dreams. And how do you propose we do that? Um, through the volumes I peruse, I've uh, entered at this possibility. And it's not the first time that we would have been contacted through that method. So I do believe those part of the books were not uh, bullshit. I suppose that's understandable. But I would only turn to that at night. Do you believe if he's not sleeping at that time, it would have worked? <clears throat> but it's, uh, it's an option I was keeping for but I don't think, right now, I don't see any way we were going to contact New China that are probably arboring him. No, our guy would probably not take that well. And it would probably so, be quite unhealthy for him. So I'm taking the other uh, path to trying to contact him, which is that. But we can, we can try to find better... Uh, pathway to him today but if that doesn't pan out I'll look into that tonight hmm. so do we want to go to the hospital try to speak with the girl or do we want to investigate the two other spots from the newspaper hmm. 
Well, what do you think, Mr. Franklin? This city is, this city is full of all kinds of dangers and incidents on a nightly basis. I think we should focus on what we know that could be related to um, this situation, if that's possible. We don't know if the monks have anything to do with this or if the other thing is. So I would think finding Brady and or possibly speaking with the person in the hospital, if possible, would be paramount. I mean, All right, well, we could start with Magenta Joy. <clears throat> the fire is really only remarkable because people said the flames were moving in a strange way. She'll sort of ruffle through the pages. Uh, where is it? Where is it? The evening fire leapt in an uncanny fashion from one blazing structure to chase the fleeing monks into the second pavilion. A floating cloud of fire followed them. But they do give the gentleman's name, who gave them that quote, and where he lives, ish, maybe? I don't understand the address system here at all. Uh, but Brilliant Poppy Lane sounds like a street. Yes, probably. The thing is, is, right now we don't have a direct path to Mr. Brady. Right. We can we can go interrogate the, the lady who saw the monstrosity, but uh, that's the best we can do directly, according to Mister Brady. And those other investigations are tangentially related; they might be linked to him. Mm. So I won't well, investigate them, but they might. Well, not I'm be just there. saying, if we chase everything that we. That, that, that that's a quote-unquote mystery. We could be chasing our own tail and losing focus on what our priorities are here. So I think we should go and try and speak with the, the person in the hospital first and then go from there. Yes. Uh, the hospital seems like a good start. And the monk I'm putting on the list because I feel like that sounds like Mr. Brady's M.O., More so than the Siemens Club. The Siemens Club is just a hunch. I don't see a, a direct path, so that's the last on my list. If we end up with nothing else to investigate. The strange creatures. Yeah. It's just that the last time we investigated strange creature, we found the painter. Um, yeah. That was linked to the whole trouble of it. Yes. Um... I would suggest that I do not go alone. I, I would suggest that we never go alone to anything anymore. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. We've tried oh, that, no. and it's not conclusive. Let's, let's not do that. Except, perhaps, for Mr. Sharp, looking into whole thing. Yeah. That might be better alone, because he can certainly, Mr. Sharp, that is, can certainly Sharp has run away faster than I can. <laughs> Indeed. I would be nothing but a detriment in that situation. I am well aware. Um, yes. Uh, but things that seem relatively safe, like visiting a painter, can lead to Disaster, so staying in a group seems best. But if we three would like to go to the hospital with our translator once he arrives, um, we can leave him with Mr. Joy. Will accept speaking with us. <clears throat> mm. We can leave a note for Mr. Sharp letting him know where we're going and. Uh, return here before we go on to the next portion of our days. 
Sounds very efficient. And hopefully we'll run across him. And I, we could always add that if he would... See, even if we don't go with him to look for poor Fang, I feel like we should be nearby. Oh yes, definitely. And within a few In case days, he needs the backup. Right? Mm. Because I'm sure if he's in a dire situation, we'd notice someone yelling in English. He has ways of getting our attention. Yes. <coughs> I don't think the climate here agrees with me. <coughs> Pardon me. Gracious. I need more tea. The tea here, though, have you noticed how good it is? Oh, yes. Sure. I'm, I'm terribly impressed. I was told we were importing tea from around here, but it doesn't show <laughs> in the local tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's quite different than what we were drinking in England. And what we were drinking in England was certainly better than anything we were getting in New York. The coffee, on the other hand, seems to be going in the other direction. Well... I can live with the trade off. If Yankee would brew the tea instead of throwing it in the harbor, probably taste better. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing Luther isn't here to hear you say that. You'd be terribly offended. <laughs> well, I did wait till Luther was away in America for, before making bad jokes. <laughs> yes, it's probably for the best. For my safety. And his well-being. His... <laughs> he, he tended to have a slight temper on occasion. Oh, yes. Quite so. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are heading to the hospital? Yep. Yes. Alright. Um, kind of a little bit of asking around, asking Lee... You know, for a nearby hospital close to, you know, where the flower houses are located on Lantern Street. Um, it doesn't take you terribly long to uh, to track down uh, a hospital relatively close to Lantern Street, which is probably the most likely location where Magenta Joy ended up. Um, it's a fairly well-appointed hospital. I mean... By 1925 standards, at any rate, <laughs> uh, not a not a terribly big building, uh, but I will get each of you to give me a spot hidden roll. No. <laughs> <coughs> I think I have to roll that for Dr. Carter. Yes, but Sorry, what was the woman's name? name? Sorry, what was that, Mark? What was the woman's name again? Magenta Joy. I'll get a spot hidden roll from Miles. Wow. We are all oblivious. Oh, Miles, you missed it by one. I'm going to spend the. <laughs> okay. So yes, uh, as you're as you're kind of making your way into the into the hospital, you know, kind of checking with the doctor. Oh, looks like Jaime's here, so we can have Jaime with you for this yep. easy enough. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yes. Sorry, so, Chris. How do I spend the luck so it gets knocked off my thing? Uh, left click on the fifty six, and then there'll be a little drop down menu, and it'll say like spend one luck to succeed. You guys didn't have to push it by half hour, but thank you. Yep. Okay. But it gave Yorick a little bit more time to get home as well, so. Uh, so just to... He's not doing anything, but... That's okay. I can get it for you. Um, so just to catch you up to speed, uh, everybody got back to the hotel after meeting uh, uh, Miss Lynn kind of deciding what they're going to do first. Uh, obviously, talking to Brady is super important. I'll put um, my notes in the chat. Oh, perfect. Uh, but the decision was to go to the, the hospital to talk to the uh, the flower girl, Magenta Joy, uh, to uh, to see what she might be able to shed on to things. Um, and the hospital is not far from Lantern Street. Uh, but as you're going in and, you know, kind of you know, send Lee up to, to talk to the doctors and nurses and see if you can get into the uh, um, into the room to see Magenta Joy. And he's off talking to them. You guys are just, you know, milling about, kind of keeping your eyes open, keeping your eyes peeled. Um, but Miles, um, you spot a uh, fairly, fairly well-built Caucasian male kind of making his way out of the hospital into the crowd crowd doing his best to not be noticed sorry a large large general uh a fairly <clears throat> fairly well built um uh caucasian male uh probably in his mid 40s doing his best to not be noticed making his way out of the hospital. Do we have a description of Brady? You do. Does this we guy match it or look even closely? Uh, yeah, you don't get a real good glimpse of him as he kind of like moves out into the crowd of people, but the, the glimpse you got <laughs> is definitely pretty close. Um, I do believe I saw somebody just leaving, trying to go into the crowd, who bears at least some resemblance to uh, our description of Mr. Brady, if we want to pursue that before we speak to Ms. Joy. Just and I will try to point him out to the rest of them, uh, so at least one of us can keep an eye on him as he's trying to blend into a crowd. Do you, <coughs> pardon me, do you and Alvin want to pursue him and Dr. Carter and I will speak? I know we just agreed that we weren't going to split off from one another, but so that we don't lose him in the crowd. You're able-bodied. <coughs> Please do chase him and see if we can, we can get your hand on Alvin nods to Miles and lets him leave. Okay. And Dr. Carter and I will continue on into the hospital. Okay. What could possibly go wrong? Okay. Uh, so, uh, Lee comes back and says, like, the, the doctors have said it's okay to see her. She's not... Um, they say that she is not, uh, what's the English word? Not responsive. Oh. When did that start? Or? Uh, when she was brought in that way. She will sometimes, oh. uh, she will sometimes come to, uh, screaming and babbling, talking about a giant bat. Um, but I explained, Whoa. I explained to the doctors that, um, Dr. Carter here, um, might be able to assist. I don't know what you're a doctor of. That's all. Oh. Well, 
in that specific case, it you haven't told a lie. I might be able to assist, but I'm not a doctor in medicine. Uh, but yes, but they they gave me her room number. Well, let's have a look. Um, so yeah, so you guys go to her room. Um, she's in like a like a private room. Uh, and she seems to be she seems to be sleeping. Well, we can sit quietly and wait for her. Let her rest while we wait for Mr. Franklin and Mr. Sharp. Uh, and I'll have both of you, actually, whoever had between Dr. Carter and Evelyn, whoever has the lowest luck can give me a luck roll. Right now. It's been bunch next game, last game, so I guess it's me. Probably mine's 76. Mine is 22. Oh, ouch. <laughs> yep, definitely you. That's what happened when I spent 26 to get a roll so I don't go back. <sighs> I mean, it's a good reason. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, so you guys kind of like, you know, there's like a couple little chairs there. You can like sit there and, and watch and wait. She's def She's sleeping. She's a young woman. She's probably like 21, 22 years old. Uh, it looks very... Um, kind of like like drawn, like like she is <coughs> she has seen some shit. Um, and she's kind of like babbling a little bit under her, under her, uh, under her breath as she sleeps. Uh, but neither of you speak Chinese, so. Um, Mister. Chang, can you make out what she's saying? Uh, so he kind of gets a little bit closer, so he can so he can hear, because I don't think he's a skilled listener. <laughs> uh, no, he does not. Oh, he does. He's got forty percent listen. Look at him. Ooh. Uh, so he kind of listens for seconds, like um, giant bat, uh, blood. Uh, claws, smoke, um, and as he's like gotten a little bit close to her, and kind of listening and kind of translating, and then her eyes suddenly flutter open, and she points right at Doctor Carter, and starts like screaming hysterically. Um, and Lee like you know backs up you know what the what the hell sort of thing and she just like basically kind of like sits up in her bed pointing at dr carter screeching um you know doctors and, and nurses and come in and kind of like get her get her settled down um you know they, they kind of get her and as she does she kind of like collapses into like less screaming but more repeating um, the same phrase over and over uh, and over uh, the whole time like up until up until the doctors physically restrain her she is still pointing directly at dr carter and, you know the doctors <laughs> get, get her settled they like you know check to see if you guys are okay um, oh, Dr. Carter reacted up, like taking a little step back, raising his arm in the air, like I mean no arm, everything's fine, and raise a eyebrow an eyebrow. And he's like, per perhaps we should we should go. I don't think she is capable of answering questions. Oh no. Um you're right on that one. The time for question is gone, sadly.
don't think we're going to get much out of that. Um, do you think you could ask the, um, the doctor if she had any physical wound? Um, so yeah, so Lee talks to the doctor. He kind of shakes his head, kind of turns his, um, no, no, no physical damage at all. Okay. Oh, we'll need some time to get better. Definitely. Um, Miss Evelyn, unless you have further idea uh, if she's not going to be speaking. Um... She, both of you can give me uh, psychology rules. Just barely. <laughs> um, psychology, I need your help. Oh no, Doctor Carter, she's fine. She's fine. A couple of days, oh, yeah. a couple of days bed rest. That's all she needs. <laughs> I'm very good with people. I know the way. She's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do I think? On the other hand, <laughs> uh, Evelyn, um, this uh, this poor girl, whatever she saw, broke her mind, uh, and just keeping her in a hospital like. That she she is never going to get better here. What do I think she needs? She needs like prolonged psychiatric care. Mm. Tell me, Mr. Chang, I'm not familiar with your country or culture. Do you have um Psychiatrists. Mm. There, there are some who fill that purpose. Um, she needs one. I don't think that she would be able to. If she's a flower girl, she has very little money. Her auntie certainly won't pay for it. Uh, won't have the necessary connections or social status to afford such care. Is it <clears throat> is it terribly expensive here? I do not know. Um, it is reserved for those who have the means to take care of their family members who may perhaps cause a loss of face. Well, if you could find out for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I will see what I can find out, but she still does not have the necessary social standing to receive such care. Uh, and I suppose that's absolutely not something that can be purchased. Uh, not to my knowledge. The unfortunate reality is that she is a flower girl. No one cares what happens to her. I do. <clears throat> and I do have the money, the means financially. So if you would be so kind. And what was it she was... Were, were those actually words when she was pointing at Dr. Carter or just... I couldn't tell. Uh, yes. What was she saying? Uh, she was saying, uh, it knows. Oh, lovely. Uh, and with that, we'll uh, switch over to Miles and uh, Alvin. Um, so yeah, so um, this gentleman, he is doing his best to, uh, to not be followed. You do see like, he, he's looking around, um, you know, he's kind of like 
hunched over, you know, kind of like trying to make himself look smaller because amongst the general populace, he does stand out a fair bit. Uh, but uh, I'll get both of you to give me tracking rolls. Um, so Miles, you kind of like lose sight of him in the crowd, and he definitely uses the crowd to his advantage. Like this is somebody who knows who knows what they're doing. Um, but Alvin, uh, you're used to following people, used to keeping a distance. Um, and between tracking you and Miles, people is what I do. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, it's not hard for the two of you to kind of get him into, you know, either head him off or. You can either follow him to where he's going, or you can catch up with him. Your choice with the with the hard success. I'm going to track him to where he's going. Okay. All right. uh, so he goes to a, a very small, very kind of modest house uh, close to the old city walls. Chris, um, on the way, I want to. I want to keep point to see if we're being followed or if anybody else has spotted him and is showing an intro. Gotcha. Uh, give me a spot hidden roll. Good call, Mark. Um, so uh, take a look around. And when you left the hospital, there was definitely other people following him. They didn't seem to either notice you or care about you guys. There were other people following him. They are not as skilled at tracking as Alvin is. Uh, so the maneuvers he takes are effective enough to lose them, but not Alvin. So it does appear that we had other parties who were interested in him, but he managed to give them the slip. Oh, I'll, I'll take lie. a mental. I'll, I'll do. I'll, sorry, Chris. I'll just do a mental note, and maybe if I've got a small little notepad with me, just jot down like a description of what those people look like. Okay. Make a little sketch with the art skill. Yeah, make a little sketch with the art skill. Yeah. Perfect. Actually, why don't you give me a give me a roll since that's what skills improve? Ugh, like horrible drawing. <laughs> Alvin turns to Miles and says, I'm not going to lie, he's pretty good. I must be blind. I'm not seeing it on my sheet. Uh, should be under... Uh, I thought it'd be under alt craft, but I don't see it. Hmm. I don't think so. Make a make an art craft roll. You've only got it at one percent. You'll still have a picture, but well, no, I, I I'm pretty sure I put ex, I put points into it. I don't have one. I've got like a twenty something in it. I think. Yeah, I might have forgotten to add it onto your sheet. Um, just uh, just roll percent on this. No, I'll I'll fix the skill later. Okay, yeah. so how do I just roll? Uh, just down at the bottom of the chat in Foundry. Uh, but yes, I, I remember you put points into it because you made sketches of the various things that you had uh, dealt with in your sketchbook. Yep. Okay. Well, that definitely wouldn't do it. So. That definitely would not do it. All right. Uh, but he does go to this like small little uh, little modest house uh, near the near the wall. Um. He does kind of like take a, a quick glance around. Um, so I'll get both of you to give me stealth rolls. All right. Um, so yeah, he takes a he takes a look around. Miles, you're a little bit further back because you're taking some time to like 
you know, check out your sketches, make your notes, so on and so forth. So you're a little bit further behind, um, a little bit further down the alleyway or, or whatever. Um, and Alvin, just at, at the last moment, you're like, he, he kind of looks around and he kind of like catches a glimpse of you. Crap. Uh, uh, and he starts making a, a beeline for you, drawing a pistol. So, um, Alvin is going to stand there. I mean, there's no stand your ground laws, but he doesn't want to pull a gun on this guy, but he has turned around and is now facing him. We have pictures of, um, shoot, I forget his name. Uh, uh, what's his name? Brady. Jack Brady. We, uh, Brady. We have pictures of Brady. Now he's turned to face me and walking towards me. Is that him? Absolutely it is. So I don't raise my hands over my head, but I, I kind of hold them at my chest level and I put both of them palms out, signaling that I'm unarmed. Okay. All right. Who the fuck are you? I was working with Jackson Elias. We need to talk. Uh, give me a uh, charm roll. Or persuade. She'd talk faster if she wanted fat talk. <laughs> Fast talking guy with a gun, let's say, has t can have terrible results. Ooh, I did not do well. <laughs> he says, "Never heard of him." Um, but rather than shooting you, uh, he does basically just kind of almost get right up into your, up into your face. He's like, the city's not safe for you. You should go. Nowhere I've been has been safe with all these cults running around. That's why I'm trying to do something about it. Like I said, we need to talk. Interesting tact. Just throwing out the cult word. Well, it's not like most people around us can hear or understand what we're talking about. It's true. Right. And he does, he does look at you like he's kind of sizing you up. I straight up tell him when I see him um, sizing me up, I straight up tell him, I do have a piece inside left under my armpit, but I haven't gone for it and I don't plan on it. And in the meantime there, Miles, you're going to like step back a little bit so you can see this if you ever want to like interact. But right now, you he doesn't seem to know that you're there. I'll approach cautiously, but I'm going to... I, I'm, I'm going to come from behind uh behind alvin but in like a non-threatening manner just like he kind of did with his with my hands up a bit okay gotcha all right um so yeah at the mention of of cults and the need to talk um he doesn't he doesn't put his gun away but he kind of uses it and kind of like motions the two of you he's like Let's go into the go into the house over there. If you have anything worth saying, you'll be able to leave alive. Best offer I've had all day. Let's go. I also tell him, uh, I'm not alone. Do you mind if I signal for my partner to come join us? Well, Miles has already approached, so. Oh, okay. So it's clear. I just wanted to make sure that it's out. Like it's exceedingly clear that we're together. He's not jumping him from behind or anything like that. Yep. Um, so yeah. So uh, at gunpoint, he will uh, bring you into this uh, fairly lovely little home. 
It's unlocked. I assume it's his place. Can, can I make that assumption? Uh, actually, as he approaches, um, uh, an, an older Chinese gentleman, uh, probably... So many characters. Uh, oh, geez. Uh, in his early 60s. Uh, opens the door and then... Uh, says something in Chinese. Um, Brady Brady says something something back in Chinese. Um, the the gentleman uh, switches over to English, very like well articulated English. Uh, says, hmm. Mr. Brady says you are perhaps friends. Come inside. We fall. Um, and inside, it's uh, this is definitely the house of somebody who does not spend a lot of time housekeeping. Um, you know, there's like there's, you know, there's a, a, a layer of dust on everything. Um, you know, it looks like you know, nothing has been necessarily taken care of. Uh, but on the table, uh, there is a. Uh, fairly lengthy scroll kind of like partially unrolled on the like the the main table a couple of like lights nearby to make it easier to read um and brady will motion with the with his gun for the two of you to sit down like have a seat keep your hands where i can see him if you don't mind passing over your piece there if you don't mind, I'll put it on the table it's just as far away, but there's a nasty tendency of terrible things popping up out of nowhere, and I'd like to have it on hand to use, but I wouldn't be able to use it against you because let's say that your trigger is faster than my arm. <laughs> that is a safe bet. Uh, fine, put it on the table. And he looks over at Miles. What about you? Are you packing as well? Only a sketchbook and some pens and pencils and a notebook. Okay. Just the same. Keep everything tucked away. And he, uh, again, he kind of. I am feeling rather naked without a gun right now, but I am not. Mm. Guns aren't. We're not. Mm. Uh, uh, Alvin looks at Miles and says, We're not big game hunting. We're here to talk. We're here to find common ground. Um, so, um, again, Brady speaks to the, this old gentleman in Chinese. And the old gentleman kind of like, you know, kind of like, like kind of like waves him off. Like whatever I just see saying is, is like, you know, inconsequential or doesn't matter or don't bother me sort of thing. That's sort of like body language. Uh, Jack kind of sits down, kind of like rubs his forehead. Um, it looks like he hasn't slept in a while. Like, so you know Elias. We knew Elias. Hmm. The shame. We were part of his Peru expedition. At least I was. Oh, part of an expedition. That never goes well. It did not. You do I don't know if you read his book. I've read a couple. I'm familiar with them. Spoke to him a bit. I was hoping he could maybe help me. And he was hoping that you could help him. Fortunately. Um, I don't think you two managed to meet before one of the cults in New York got to him. Uh no, no, we met. We uh, we spoke a bit. I was hoping that I could get him to uh, I don't know, write a book about something. Uh, let the you know let people know what was going on. I think he was trying to. We got bits of a manuscript. He was in the process of building it. You, well, bits of that manuscript and everything that's going on has kind of led us here. So, just the two of you. You guys are fucking no. doomed. No, there's there are four or five of us now, Chris. Uh, there's like four. Depends on whether whether Lee hangs around or not. <laughs> there's four of us. Um, 
look to to let me let me level with you here. We need an ally. So as much as you say that we're fucked, we know that. And we don't know as much as you do about the as far as we can tell, but the large what's what what's really going on. But we might have a lot of very specific info and intel that we can share. And as much as we need an ally, we think that you need one too. So I'm going to be flat out honest with you and tell you what's happened over the last little while. And hopefully you believe me. And hopefully we talk again and we can begin working towards something that might look like friendship eventually. All right. So what do you know? So it all started in Peru. I didn't believe any of it until I came face to face with it. We had to put down uh, monsters that were being summoned by, again, a cultist of some kind. You can read all about it in the book. I don't want to go there. It was my first time. It was terrible. Years later, we had a call from Jackson, Mr. Elias, saying he's discovered something and he needs our help. Just like in Peru, we could be useful together and do something about it. And while we were waiting to meet with him, he was murdered in the apartment upstairs. We ended up starting an investigation. I'm a PI by trade. And we helped, well, before the police got involved, we managed to track down that he was killed by cultists. They were running amok in the city. They had done multiple murders. They were doing terrible things. We tracked them down. We found them bringing the dead back to life. I'm looking at Miles, by the way, while I'm talking about all of this. I don't know how much of it he's heard firsthand. Um, so uh, it's kind of like serves as an expose for both of them, I guess. So back to Alvin. So he says um, they were bringing the dead back to life, but not in a good way. They were mindless, dead things that were just animated, like out of our nightmares. Um, we managed to help the police make sure that there was enough evidence that they would be indicted, tried, and convicted of all those murders. And that's when we found out that there was more involved. We ended up finding out that there were multiple cults around the world and they were all trying to synchronize to a specific event, a larger event. We traced one of them or some of that to London. Same thing, murders, cultists. And there we ran into the head of one of the cultists who tried to summon monsters to kill us in our sleep. Invisible monsters who tried to pull us out of cars and strangle us to death. It was fantastic. Gavigan. Yes. Gavigan's dead. Killed him too. Oh, good. But we found more information, not only with the, the manuscript and the information that Elias left us, but through everything we found in London, which said that there were other cults out there. And some of the information ran here to Shanghai. Now we find out that one of the members of the of the expedition, or all of this seems to have started, is alive and working against the interests of the cults, like we are. And they might understand what the hell we've gotten ourselves into. Yeah, I'm not the only member that made it out alive. Well, does any of this sound... Are you going to put your gun away now? Or is this is still a requirement at this point? No. Can I put mine back in my holster? No. Okay. Fair. We're not there yet. So, that's us in three minutes. Do you want to share? Where's the rest of your team? Right now, interviewing uh, Magenta Joy. Yeah, I don't think they're going to get anything out of her. I was hoping. I was hoping she would have information. As are we. The entire giant bat thing rings too close to home. We've had encounters with that thing before. Mm. 
nasty buggers. Um, but I wasn't there for that. I was hoping she could tell me what happened to Choi Mei Ling. Oh, we know what happened to her. What happened to her? And you see, he gets like... If you don't answer this question correctly, you have a very strong feeling that he might shoot you. Ho Fang has her. Son of a bitch. Not only does Ho Fang have her, but strong belief is he's going to put her in a situation where you have to save her to get his hands on you. And he uh, he says over to, uh, you know, when you mention Ho Fang's name, the old Chinese gentleman who's been like busying himself with the scroll kind of like stops, kind of looks up, looks at, looks at Brady. Brady looks at him, says something in Chinese. Shit. Okay. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. <laughs> Get your friends, meet me at the Stumbling Tiger. Yep. I need to get in touch with some people. Do you want to leave first before I holster my gun, or do you want to allow me to holster it before I step out? Because uh, I'm going to need it eventually. Yeah. Now, go ahead. If you do anything funny, I'm probably faster than you anyway. Pick up my gun very slowly with two fingers, put it back in my holster, and I say, we'll see you then. Give me uh, two hours. That should give time for us to get back into safety before the dark comes. We'll see you in two. Um, and as you guys leave, he doesn't escort you to the door. He, you know, like, make sure you leave and don't loiter around the house, but he doesn't escort you to the door. Um, oh, uh, before he before we leave? Yep. I know these are not very well drawn, but... Um, I would like to show Jack the horrible drawings that I did of the other guys who were trying to follow him from the hospital to see if he recognizes them. And uh, he looks at them. He says, I don't recognize I do apologize them. for the quality. I, I, I drew them in a rush, and I'm still learning this talent. I don't recognize the individuals, but I have no doubt that they work for Ho Fang. If you see any of these and you want to put that gun to use, nobody will miss them. Yeah, I'm not into wanton murder as much as I'm into stopping the cultists. Maybe before we leave, is it Ho Fang? Is Ho Fang running this? Ho, Ho Fang is the leader of the cult of the bloated woman. You say the cult of the bloated woman is if there's other cults out there. There are several. In Shanghai? No, no one would dare. So he's the go-to in Shanghai. No, if you don't mind, I have friends that I need to find. I'll meet you in two hours. And uh, watch out, the puzzle house is uh, is watched. Oh, I'm, I'm aware that it's watched. That's why I'm meeting there. I'd rather they don't find another place. I tip my hat. I make a motion to Miles. I make sure Miles walks out first because I'm the one who's armed. And then we go. That's okay. That's fine. Okay. Perfect. All right. Meanwhile, uh, Evelyn and Dr. Carter, are you guys doing anything or just waiting for Alvin and Miles to get back? <clears throat> I think we're just waiting for them to get back. Yep, was my uh, was my thought. All right, perfect. Chris, how long does it take to get back? Um, probably around one o'clock. So you've got about an hour to the meeting. Okay, uh, 
on the way back. Miles, what'd you think? I think he's a paranoid individual who probably knows that people are looking for him. Yeah, if he wasn't paranoid, he'd probably be dead, which puts him in the smart category, I guess. What do you think about his situation? Do you think he's a potential ally? I haven't had enough interaction with him to really have an opinion right now, one way or another. I like that. You keep me sharp, uh, Miles. I'm tending to lean with my gut. My gut says we trust him. I need someone to tell me I'm, I'm overstepping, if ever that comes down to that. I will do my best. I trust my gut when it comes to hunting things a little bit more than... But I also try to be prudent and cautious. I like that. I try to... To, to, to an extent. Well, that's good. I try to read people, and my read on him is like us. Good guy. Got, got a shit hand dealt to him in, in a situation that he's not in by choice. Good and bad are very um, subjective terms, open to interpretation by the person and their own beliefs and morals and such. Yeah, that's why I have to use mine. Okay, we make it the rest of the way. All right. So, yeah, so... After probably 40 minutes or so there for uh, Dr. Carter and Evelyn, uh, Miles and uh, and Alvin make it back to you guys. Oh, you, you don't seem shot. Was the, the unch uh, right? Was it the person we were looking for? Yeah, it was Brady. We made contact with him. He's going to meet us at this tea house in an hour and a bit. Hello, oh, watch. glorious. I'd rather, I'd much rather meet him that way. Yeah, um, he's as paranoid as we expected. He's armed, and people are also trailing him. Other than us. Other than us. Jack, su Jack suspects that it's um, Ofeng minions who are trying to track him. Oh. How quaint. I drew crude sketches of them in case uh, we see them again. I can show them to you, people to keep an eye out. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I would... We can try. <laughs> I'd rather know which face not to trust if they pop up. They were waiting not far outside the hospital when I first pointed him out in the crowd. I saw them as we were departing. Miles, did you think yeah. that, that the tails were, and I don't know if you could tell, did you, were they waiting at the hospital to pick him up or did they fall into the hospital? Well, not a can't, I can't tell you if they followed him to the hospital. I only noticed them after we departed to follow him that they were making their way. So I'm not sure at what point, you know, I saw them. I just know that they were in the hospital area, if nothing else, and they had shown an interest in him as he was trying to give us the slip. Right. But if he wants to, Mr. Brady can be very sneaky and avoid uh, detection. It was, uh, it was Mr. Shop here who, who kept us on the right track there after I initially lost, lost sight of him. And um, the two other thugs or whatever they are, they lost him pretty quickly.
And Mr. Well, and Mr. Sharp here tried to uh, recruit Jack into joining our ragtag group of misfits. Recruits a little bit much. We know that he has information that we don't have. I was trying to get at. But yeah, I think he's a little bit like us. A man pressed into a situation that he can't ignore and has to take action on. Regardless of what's in his best interest. So I would talk to them and see if um, can get anything out of them. See what happened with his expedition. And um, if he can help us make a bit clearer all of this mess. My only suggestion would be to bring notes. He's still skeptical of us. So I'm not saying we bring proof. I'm not saying we bring proof, but we need to be ready if he challenges on what side of this we're on. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I'm not sure what sort of notes we could bring. What sort of proof is he looking for? Now that you ask, I'm wondering what kind of proof I would accept as a proof that someone is not a culprit. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. yeah you. It's, it seems self-evident until I try to find a like correct answer to your question, and then started spiraling. I mean, we have some rather. Um, we sent mm -hmm. most of our uncomfortable items back to the United States. Oh, we have Things a few. That were a we have a few with us. But I don't know that they'd help us prove that we're not. The thing is, with trophy you took from cultists that you've taken out, it's still cultist things. Mm -hmm. The two people who would have them is people hunting cultists and cultists. So it doesn't separate the shop from the grain. Uh, we're still stuck in that spiral. I might have a letter from Jackson tucked away. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I have a tendency to use the nurses. We bookmarks. Also have, and, uh... <laughs> we also have the will, don't we? Or a copy of it that says that Jackson trusted us enough to go after this stuff and to endow us with his tiny fortune. Yeah. Did we bring that with us? I mean, well, I don't have the original, but I have uh, some working a photocopy. copy of it. <laughs> no, it's not a photocopy, but it's a working copy that the uh, lawyer gave us so we could access the account. It's not the, the original things, but Close enough. Well, do we have any preparation to make before we meet him? I mean, I don't think we, I don't know how prepared we can be. I, I don't know if we have any proof that um, Gavigan's end was by our hands. He seemed to be pretty pleased that he was gone. He also mentioned that he's not the only surviving member of the Carlisle expedition. The only thing that I have from Gavigan is his unsent letter to the White Fire. I think that's useful. We know that to be, the target's him, right? So he might be interested yep. in seeing that. Targets it's him, and mm -hmm. we can use that as a as or well. Elias seems to have trusted you, and our enemy seems to despise you. 
So we thought that maybe we could talk with you to strengthen our bo our causes. Uh, explain the logic that brought us here. That usually work with people, like you just explain to them logically the step that brought you to the conclusion and they agree. Hopefully. Did he say which other members of the expedition were still alive? Well, we know we one of them. We he, know one of them. Let's check if it's the same one. You might. Well, he's he's one of the surviving members of the expedition, right? Yep. He's the. He's the one we know of for certain. Who and the one is the one that is shipping the the the. How do you say that the 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 fossil fossil of the machine from Australia? Yeah, but we don't know who that is. We just know that they are likely a surviving member of the expedition. Oh, I think uh, we have the name somewhere. Let me check my notes. You do have the name. That was Dr. Houston. Dr. Houston, okay. And Dr. Houston was the psychiatrist of the, the leader of the expedition? Yep. The one that wanted to the leader of the expedition to stop seeing uh, his uh, magical lady friend because he was of... losing he was losing control over the expedition leader. Right, she so, was the high priestess or her his goddess, right? If I remember correctly, or something like that. Mm -hmm. It felt like two cultists vying for the same control over the same person. The only th useful bit of information you tell us about Shanghai is that Ho Fang is the leader of the cult here, and that there are no secondary cults here because no one would dare to act against Ho Fang. Lovely. That's Which is great, because like... there's only one snakehead to kill, but terrible because... He's a very dangerous snake. Yes. So that means that probably White Viper works for him. Possibly, but no one seems to think that Pale Viper is him. At least no one that we've spoken to about it so far associated him with that name. I think the man from the cafe said that uh, White Viper was making more effort to be discreet. Uh, he heard about it. He heard of him, but he was a lot more discreet than Ofang. So two different people then. Probably yes. Mm -hmm. And it's either the White Viper is working for Ofang because White Viper is definitely a cultist. He's either working for Ofang, or in his pyramid of power, or he is another cult that is discreet enough for Ofang to have not noticed him. Which is a very dangerous game to play from what I hear. Look, you guys are good at convincing people. Uh, more than me. <laughs> so you tell me what it would take. What it would take to... This what, is uh, a... We have... As a note, sorry. by this time, you've got about a half hour to get to your meeting. And But it's, but it's not that far away, you said, right? Well, probably 15 minutes. So we start heading out that way. I mean, is there any paperwork that we need to get? That we can get in the time frame? I mean, I'll bring the leather. That's the best I have. Okay, let's I, do that. That would help. Um, of course, Evelyn will go digging through her belongings and see if she has a letter from Jackson. I don't know if she yeah. wants, like, a, I'll, I'll also bring one of my fossils. Not all of them, but one of them. Uh, you do have a, a copy of his final note that says greetings from beyond the grave. It's uh, Carla Papers, America, number 10. Oh. 
basically continue my work, find out what happened to the expedition. <laughs> Both of those Excellent. things should explain why we're here and why we're motivated to do something about shit. Mm -hmm. But yes. We'll see if that's sufficient. Alright. So you guys make your way to the Stumbling Tiger? Yes. Um, so, uh, the barn looks slightly different than it did last time you were here, uh, which would have been like yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon. Um, the big thing is the, the two gentlemen posted out front, both with Thompson submachine guns. Oh, hello. Um, they kind of, they, they, kind of look at you one of them yells back into the into the bar in chinese uh lee says like yeah they're they're expecting you do you need me for this this looks this looks like something i don't need to be a part of um i agree but you might want to stay close like in the area is there a cafe or a restaurant we could With, treat you to while we talk? Within shouting distance, maybe. So I can come to your rescue? <laughs> or, you know, help us run away. How about I meet you at the hotel tomorrow if you're still alive? Look into the psychiatric help. Please. Yes, I will go do that. That sounds like a fine idea. Thank you very much. And he uh, he quickly makes his exit. Um, Can't see I'm leaving. But yeah, there's a poor boy. You no, know, some some yelling yeah. yelling from the guards. There's a yell like yelling from inside, and the guards say something to you in Chinese, and then kind of motion for you to enter. Uh, inside the Stumbling Tiger, uh, there's like four more people uh, also armed with Thompsons. Uh, and um, uh, Jack is uh, Jack is up at the bar talking with a uh, you know middle-aged Chinese gentleman. Uh, Fergus is behind the bar. Is this well? You are you're getting a lot of background noise. Oh, sorry about that. And sorry, what was that? I have a lot of background noise. I'll, I'll make sure to yeah. not. Do it. <laughs> uh, sorry, what were you asking there, Evelyn? Oh, what you're, you'll, I've been derailed. Sorry, you'll need to repeat the last bit of it. Thompson machine guns. Uh, so inside, there's like four four people also armed uh, with Thompsons. Uh, Brady is at the bar talking to like a middle aged Chinese gentleman, and uh, Fergus, the barkeep, is behind the bar. There is nobody here that is not heavily armed, uh, or uh, or Brady and the gentleman he's talking to. Evelyn will look over at Alvin and say. I really wish Luther was here right now. Fergus will kind of like line up some shot glasses. Relatively clean. I do have my sidearm with me, so not that it would help considering the number of thumbs in around here, but mm. uh, that's so I figured. I figure the problem will be other people, not the people in the bar. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, and uh, and Jack and the Chinese gentleman seem to be having a fairly heated discussion. Um, uh, the, the Chinese gentleman seems to be a little bit calmer. Jack seems to be quite worked up. Uh, you do hear the name Ho Fang uh, a couple of times. Um, Fergus kind of notices you've poured some drinks. You're going to need these. It's one of those nights. Uh, 
Um, and when when Jackson or when Jack kind of sees you, he's like, it's like, have a seat over there. I'll be just a second. He turns back and says something. Sounds very angry or uh, even threatening in Chinese to the gentleman he's talking to. Uh, there is definitely some tension in the air. Um, and folks can give me psychology rules. I don't feel safe. I could be all the guns. If, uh, if Alvin and Miles are back, they can give my psychology rolls as well. But yes, Evelyn, you do not feel safe. Um, not even slightly. Uh, the the folks here, the folks here with the Thompsons, like just judging by the way they're kind of fidgeting and stuff. These are people that are itching for a fight. They are itching for violence to happen. Um, uh, psychology is one of the skill I can't reach. Sorry. Yeah, I got it for you, but you rolled an eighty. I didn't feel the vibe. No. Um, <sighs> Yeah, they are definitely itching, itching for a fight. Um, Jack is, Jack is definitely angry. He's not necessarily itching for a fight. He is pissed off. Uh, the Chinese gentleman that he was talking to uh, is also pissed off, uh, but his uh, his anger seems to be directed at Jack as opposed to Jack's general like I'm pissed off and I want to rip off somebody's head vibe uh, but Jack does come over and uh, sit at the table with you This seems very uh, tense. Well, we got the. There's some shit we got to do. Chuman uh, over there doesn't understand that I need to go and get her. Oh, oh, fang. I'm going to tear that goddamn mansion of his apart. Um, okay. Well, you, I do not advise against it, but you're aware it's a trap. Don't care. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is fully assumed. Just plan accordingly. Well, I was hoping that these folks would be willing to hand, but none of these, and he like raises his voice, like none of these chicken shits want to help. Doesn't, doesn't matter everything I've done for them. None of them react, like they react to the tone of his voice, but you get the feeling that none of them speak English. I would assume that those fine folks are from uh, New China. Yeah, uh, we got something in the, something in the works. Is that related to those um, religious leaning of the local population? The goddamn cult? Fucking right. Well, I'm glad to see that some people are willing to act against those here. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing: the you know the the cults, the different cults, the the bloody tongue, the the bloated woman, the father of bats. Uh, the Dark Pharaoh, you know, they, they get their hooks in where they can. They do tend to prey on the weak and the vulnerable. But uh, the powerful are just as corrupt, if not maybe easier to corrupt. So they got their hooks in there, too. So these folks are willing to strike a blow to, you know, restore the good of China or whatever. It just coincidentally happens to be a strike against, you know. The cults. Yeah, I see where it intercede. Um, you you had your uh, your problem with Gavigan in London. Oh, I heard he's dead. Yes, 
Uh, do, do you know what he was up to? Um, no clue. Uh, leading the cult. I mean, I know. Hey, maybe I should start at the beginning because you guys don't seem like you know much. It seems like you, you yeah. know enough to get into trouble. <laughs> Oh yeah, we we do have that part covered. We we have ample enough to get into shit. Quite skilled. All right, so I'll tell you what I know, what I told Jackson, what I was hoping he could bring to light in one of his books, and then if you all get any questions, then you can ask. Sounds like a good start. All right. So. Uh, you know that we're all fucked, right? Getting that impression. Okay. So I was well, hoping... I saw, what, I saw what's coming if they finish their shit. You have no idea. So I was hoping that Jackson, you know, with all his books on cults and weird stuff, that, you know... People would read his book, and then maybe people would do something. Uh, but I heard that um, I heard that Jackson uh, was killed, and I'm I'm sorry for that. I understand you uh, you were friends, uh, but I did warn him. Um, so I'm warning you guys too. Uh, like these these assholes, they play for keeps. Uh, so this all started. 19, 19 five years ago maybe uh, my uh, my friend Roger Roger's always been a little little eccentric little you know uh, but he met this he met this woman uh, and I I knew she was no good for him like you know how when you're with your friends and they meet the wrong person you just know mm -hmm. uh, so she came in and she got him all wrapped around her finger. Um, and th the more he saw her, the more odd he started to get. He started to have these dreams. He started to, you know, wander the, the bad streets around Harlem and stuff. Came one day and said that he wanted to go to Egypt. Um, and I thought, you know, get away from get away from the city, get away from the stress of the business, get away from his sister, get away from this woman. You know, things get back to normal. I mean, I owe Roger a lot. And he was a nice guy. Uh, so we put together put together a little bit of a team. We're gonna do, you know, an expedition they called it. Uh, but really just a chance to get away. Uh, the trip to London was fun. Uh, but once we got to uh, once we got to London, uh, Roger started spending all of his time with uh, with Aubrey, uh, Sir Penhew, uh, going over this junk uh, that they'd gotten from this uh, this guy in Egypt, uh, Warren Bessert. Uh, it was like a kind of a like a head and shoulder statue, you know the type I mean. A bust. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, made out of like this black stone. And he just stared at it for hours. Um, and then there was this map that they would pour over and study. The way the way a normal guy looks like a nice lady. Chris, do we have that bust? Um, no, I don't believe you do, actually. You have a bust. I don't think you have that one. Okay. Just checking. I mean, sure, there were still parties and sightseeing trips and going around London, but mostly it was about the map. <laughs> planning for the trip to Egypt. Uh, so we got to Cairo. There was uh, there was me, there was Roger, there was Sir Aubrey came with us, His, uh, Roger's doctor, Houston, who really should have talked some sense into him, uh, and Patty, who was Roger's girlfriend at the time. Uh, he'd long since lost touch with the other one. I think maybe Patty just thought she was his girlfriend. You know how, you know, Roger had money, wasn't bad looking, you know how things are. So anyway, we got to Cairo and Roger started having these dreams again. Started going on, talking crap about meeting a god. Uh, but the girl wasn't around, Roger stopped drinking. Um, and Houston and Aubrey were acting 
just as weird as Roger, if not more so. And my mom didn't raise many stupid children. I was like, this, this is going to be trouble. And then, uh, then Roger really went off the deep end. I started ranting about how they could meet the god, uh, but they had to destroy the eye and open the path. So anyway, so Houston, I mean, he was Roger's goddamn doctor. He should have, you know, he should have said something. He should have, you know, talked him down. Uh, but he only encouraged him, egged him on. Um, so the the first night, uh, we were up the Nile at uh, Dashur. Uh, Roger snuck out and uh, climbed up the pyramid. <sighs> I went with him. I mean, it's my friend. I got to stop him from doing anything too stupid, right? <sighs> Any of you guys ever climbed the pyramid? Everyone will kind of look at him with a touch of, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and then look down at her legs and then look back up at him. Oh, yeah, once or twice. Uh, so anyway, they are freaking steep. Uh, but Roger, Roger just climbed it just like a monkey. Never looked back, never hesitated. Uh, but I followed him, you know. <laughs> Maybe I was a little crazy, too. So the thing with the the thing with this pyramid, they call it the red pyramid. Um, most of it is like about two thirds of it is just chunks of rock. Like the the pyramid builders, they they filled it, but the way uh, the way Roger told me is uh, people stole the nice stone from around the bottom of it, but the stuff that was up higher they couldn't get. So the top part is tougher climb, but Roger went right up it too. Uh, me, I was doing everything I could to not fall down the freaking pyramid. So up at the top of this pyramid, uh, Roger puts on some kind of robe. Starts making these weird sounds, like weird fucking sounds. Uh, and I'm like, okay, this is it. Roger's gone. He's... Um, but then there's a, like an explosion. And then like echoes and screams and a flash of light. And, um I lay there for a minute until it kind of seemed to uh, seem safe to get up. Uh, Roger just looked at me and said, the eye is gone. Now we can be gods. But, you know, by that point, that was just, you know, that was Roger. That was the way he talked. So, uh, uh, but beside him, there was a, a big patch ripped out of the, to uh, out of the top of the stone or the top of the pyramid. Uh, that looked fresh. Um, not going to lie, I went back the next day to check, and maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me. I mean, that was, that was a bit of a night. Um, the patch had been filled in, uh, like the pyramid had repaired itself. Um, but near the base of the pyramid, I found part of a rock which looked like it could have been in that patch. Uh, and it had a, a symbol carved on it. And he kind of sketches out a little symbol. Of, this will all be in the notes when I give them to you. There's a condensed version for you guys. To oh, have thank to, goodness. To, to access. Um, so uh, so, um, so I, I took it, even though I, I didn't know what it was at the time. Uh, but I do know what it is now. Um, it's, uh, it's, and he, and he looks at you. He's like, it's magic. It's uh, magic that keeps evil things away from us. And Roger deliberately broke it. Um, I've still, I've still got it. If, uh, is it an elder sign? No. Um, according, according to my friend, uh, who's translated in school, it's something called the light of eye and darkness. The eye he broke. The eye he broke. Uh, so, anyway, two days after that, and I was like, not going to lie, I was already starting to make some plans. Uh, but the the gang, uh, Aubrey, Roger, Houston, Patty, uh, gave me the slip, disappeared into the pyramid. Uh, sent some messengers to try to find them. They came out shrieking that the pyramid had eaten them. Workers running in all directions. The whole dig deserted in like five minutes flat. Uh, <laughs> I was literally the only person left. Um, 
problems. So I went in. Nobody was there. But a couple hours later, out come all the missing people from the pyramid. Roger says hmm, that they've been to Egypt, to the real Egypt. Uh, Penhu, Penhu looked like he had, he was younger. Like probably a good five or ten years younger than when he went into the pyramid. Uh, Patty and Houston also, there was something, something off about them. None of them could explain where they'd been. And uh, I'll tell you, after that, we had a hard time hiring workers. But, um, you know, we continued on with the expedition, with the dig. Um, we'd, uh, I'd wake up sometime in the middle of the night, cold sweats, the rest of the gang already awake, talking in this language that I never heard before. Uh, and then one night, uh, Roger woke me and said he was going to show me that the, uh, the power of what they'd learned. Uh, so we went out into the, the desert brought some of the, the few workers that we had with us. Everybody started streaming weird words, singing these weird songs, Penhu beating on this drum, uh, this drum that he got from this Najar fellow in Egypt. Uh, and these creatures came out of the ground and ate the workers. Roger and the others started laughing. Um, so, uh, so I left quickly. Um, Found the nearest uh, nearest place where a uh, man could get a drink, and uh, tried to forget what I saw. Um, Roger found me the next day. Uh, told me that uh, I had to change my attitude. Um, and you gotta understand, like, if it wasn't for Roger, I would I would have died years ago i owed roger the rest of them i don't give two shits about but i owed roger so uh so i came up with a little bit of a plan um started putting some things into work some people i knew uh, from there uh from cairo we headed to kenya um roger filled me in while we traveled that they had found a true god who would rule the earth and we would rule with that god for we were chosen the God had picked us to open the way for his return, and there was enough and you know, you see some things, you tend to start to be a little bit more open-minded. Uh, every week that we traveled from Cairo to Kenya, Penu got a little bit younger, Patty got sick a lot. Um, we were supposed to go from Nairobi to someplace up in the mountains. Uh, Some place, no rivers, no railways, no telegraphs, no police. Uh, and I started thinking, you know what? I don't think Miss Brady's son is getting out of this alive. Uh, so the last night we were in Nairobi, I uh, I drugged Roger, grabbed the cash box, and uh, it says money anyway. And uh, thanks to some friends, got me and him aboard an unscheduled freighter uh, heading to Mombasa. Uh, from what I read in the paper, my guess was right. Uh, they say a lot of people died, uh, including Roger. Um, so I just let everybody think that. Um, so my friends managed to get us to, uh, managed to get us to, to Mombasa. We found a fisherman who's willing to go to Zanzibar from Zanzibar. We got to Durban and Durban, we, uh, made our way to Perth. From Perth, we got to Hong Kong. Uh, the further we got away, the more normal Roger got. Uh, but still, started having nightmares. And there was nothing I could do. I think he realized what he had done. Uh, so, China and Shanghai, Hong Kong. I've got some friends from when I was in the service. Um, and I 
spent up most of the money that was left and I got Roger into a place that'll help him. Uh, and I was, I was sure that I had put this shit behind me, um, until, um, I happened to see Sir Aubrey on his yacht, uh, the Dark Mistress in the harbor here. And so, uh, I know that's a lot, but, uh. If you're looking for people that have an idea as to what's going on, now you know my bona fides, as they say. You said you saw Sir Aubrey on his yacht? Yep. Fuckers here in town. What was the yacht called again, Chris? The Dark Mistress. <laughs> okay. I I'm going to pile on a bit. If, if you allow me. Um, the, the, the psychiatrist, he, he also is still alive. Yeah. Uh, Houston. Uh, he's on Australia. Yeah. He has been shipping, uh, fossil, fossil, fossils, fossilized, um, machines that predate humanity to Penu. And they have been trying to build back that machine. They're trying to they're trying to bring about the ascension of their god. Do you know anything about those machines that would predate humanity? Um, I don't know anything about the machines. Uh, I know that. From what I've been able to tell, uh, they're coordinating efforts here. Penn Hughes overseeing things here. Uh, Houston's in Australia. Uh, I think Patty's still in Kenya. There was uh, markings on the, the machine. The new one they're building and the old one that got fossilized that are markings of those dark deity. The Hurley Alpha. Um, time. yeah. One of the many names. Yeah. He has uh, the, 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 the culture widespread. You're not dealing with just like individual cults. It's it's one. Yeah. And they they add a clock in New York so that they could coordinate their their ritual at the same exact time across the world. Mm, I'm not surprised. Um, I know there's some other people involved. There's a, a gentleman in Cairo named uh, Omar al-Shakti, uh, Gavigan, a uh, woman named Zara, um, Hofang, a uh, gentleman, I think, in Kenya named uh, Tonkar. Aren't they all worshipping their own gods? It's one god. Just different aspects. It's the the higher ups seems to be aware that it's one god, and they use the name that's most efficient for whatever places they are. Yeah, many of these cults go back centuries. Uh, you know, Did they, you know the the woman from Empire Spice in in London, Zara? Do you know what her deal is? She's the. <laughs> And co-lead of one of the cults there. the uh, In England, I think it's the Brotherhood of the Dark Pharaoh. Oh, she just wanted Javigan dead. So, I'm trying to figure her out. Well, if you're the co-leader and the other one dies, then you're the soul leader. Yeah. I wonder if there was more than that. But probably not. That's what I'm, I'm talking about. They seem to worship maybe their different aspects. But why would that matter if it's the same god? Why would one want their aspect to be ascendant over the other one if they're just going to summon the whole thing anyway? Well, they don't, but when Harlothet uprises, he will grant his priests with power. If you have your god coming to give you power, do you want to share that with somebody? I do well, sure don't it. seem so. Like different denominations. 
but also it keeps things on the down low, right? You know, if it's a small local cult, the authorities, you know, deal with it or they don't or they become corrupted. But if it's multiple cults in multiple areas, I mean, it's not just here. Okay. There's, uh, from when I was talking to Jackson, there's cults in India and Japan and South America, Polynesia. Like, there are, there are tendrils everywhere. Uh, but I'm hoping the uh, the scroll that my friend is translating can shed some light on to uh, what exactly they might be planning. I I know in broad strokes, Roger went on and on about the ascension of the god was coming. Uh, I think Ho Fang knows more, and maybe I will beat that information out of him. He seems very powerful around here. Not to say that it should not be it be beaten out of them, but just making sure to do it in a way that will give you success and not just a early debt. So another lady, the one who previously tried to buy the scroll. Uh Lynn, yes. You know about her? She's rich. She's she collects art. She has no idea what the scroll actually is. Oh. But I'm not in a position where I can offer to buy it from her, so I stole it. Oh no. Yeah, so she is uh, willing to pay to get it back. She doesn't care about you. She cares about her scroll. But even if she doesn't practice, I believe some people around her do. Hmm. It's possible. Some of her entourage. Well, Just something to watch out for. Uh, I don't plan to give it back to her, so... Hmm. No, but she might send those people or have them do things against you. That's what I got. Uh, any kind of motions vaguely to the people around with the submachine guns. Does that work against the... Um... Hunters of the Chaos God. Put enough bullets into it, most things die. Not everything, but most things. Um, Evelyn, hmm. Dr. Carter, can that help us with our problem in the night? That was what I was going to ask. Do you have any solution for the hunters in the night? Don't go outside at night. Oh, we weren't outside. We were inside. And it... it came a knocking. Oh, you pissed somebody off. Well, we were looking for you, and we found the hunter that was looking for you, and he spotted us. Hmm. Enough bullets will stop a hunting horror. They're tough, but they're not impervious. Well, I really wish they were have ways of putting walls between us and it. But... Hmm. The best thing would be to find whoever summoned it and make him stop. Probably Ho Fang. I figured that would be a problem. Conveniently, I plan to go kill him. Oh, I, I know that. Um, what happens to this creature if you do? To what, the hunting horror? Mm -hmm. Well, the hunting horror can't exist during daylight hours. So that means he needs to summon it and send it on a task in the night. So he has to repeat that every night? Yes. Oh, good. And every time he does so, he kills someone. Yep. That's not so good. I don't think he cares. How long oh, I don't think take? he cares either. How long well, there's a the trailer body. Sorry, what was that, Elvin? How long does the summoning take, do you think? Uh, hunting horror... 10, 15 minutes, maybe. Oh, terrible. If it took hours, he might figure out that it's less worth his time. But if it's only 15 minutes, I don't think people are concerned to him, but his own time might be. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, there's ways to, there's ways that you can ward your, uh, your domicile. Your friend here said that, uh, 
You throw up a barrier, that'll do by the night at least. But it's not the sort of thing yeah. that you want to uh you know what one you don't want to do that constantly. I've seen what uh, I've seen what calling on that sort of magic does to a person. Yeah, I was trying to find something less demanding. So I was asking if he knew any other technique to keep the word that away. Mm. Ready? Yeah. Are we friends now? I wouldn't go that far, but let's say let's say did any he addresses the men, not Evelyn. It's like any of you serve in the war? Yes. All right. So there's friends, and then there's folks that you have served in the trenches with. Yeah, I get where you're going with that. So unfortunately, we had to send ours home. So I don't really know you, but we're fighting the same fight. But we're fighting the same fight, and maybe if we get through this, we'll share a pint. Yes. Um, do you know about the White Viper? Uh, yeah, Aubrey always had a flair for the dramatic. Aubrey. Yeah, Penhu. Aubrey Penhu. Oh, oh, okay, I see. Uh, I'm gonna whip out the letter that um, Gavigan was writing. He never got to send this. Oh, good. Well, if Aubrey saw me, he'd try to kill me, so... Was he a member of the expedition, too? Yeah, he was the Egyptologist. Okay. Do you know who would be referred to as the White Fang? Or, no, Pale Fang. The Pale Fang. Pale Viper? Pale Viper. Oh. Yeah, that's the one I was asking about. <laughs> He's... This many guns in the room, it's rather um, disturbing. Sorry, yes, the Pale Viper. That's Ben Hugh. He's, he's up to something on Grey Dragon Isle. The, the boys and I were discussing, um, you know, going there and uh, disrupting his plans. Did you, by any chance, disrupt any plans of monks in the local... Let me check that article again. Oh, yeah, I felt bad about that. Um, I think Ho, Ho Fang sent some, uh, sent some fire spirits after me, fire vampires. Oh, so you were not trying to put that place down? No. Uh, Ho Fang has tried to get me... Let's see, there was the semen house, there was the fire vampires, there was the semen's house. He sent water creature at you, yep. Um, but uh, so yeah, he's tried to kill me three times now, sending various creatures after me. Hmm. The hunting, the hunting horror. Uh, so I think uh, I think since those creatures have proved to be ineffective, um, I think he I think he took uh, someone who was important to me to uh, force my hand. Force you out. Well, since we warned you that he has her, he has not yet made his move to make it known that she has her. So maybe maybe you can take him off guard. Mm, maybe. Do you know how his place is set up? No, I've never been there. I'm, I'm not going anywhere near that. Well, I am now, but no. I mean, I mean, I want, I want to put an end to this. I made a promise to Elias that I would see this through, and you surviving this would help. So maybe we could establish a plan that would get your friend out, and would get our Ofeng out of the way. In a careful manner. I know that the Penu Foundation has been sending him shipment of artifacts from London. Makes sense. So we knew he was a person of interest. 
How do you plan on doing something about him? I was planning to convince these assholes, and again, his voice raises, but nobody reacts because they don't speak English. <laughs> I will never tire of this. <laughs> to load up some firebombs and some shotguns and go through the front door and kill everyone until I get to her. Last time we did that, we needed grenades. We can get those. <laughs> Not Can you describe me what Ofang looked like? Yeah, I feel he describes Ofang. Good. Is there any way we could? Because he seems to be very dangerous. So if we need, if we do something against him, we need it to be final. We need this to be efficient and quick. I do not think that the law would be of any use around here. So I'm sorry to say. Uh, Mr. Sharp, that we are going to need to be a bit more unorthodox to get that problem dealt with. But we need to know a bit more about him and his surrounding if we want to do anything about him. Well, Ho Fang owns some of the law anyway, and he's got a private army to back him up, so the law is not going to do anything. How 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 uh, faithful are his army to him? They, in uh, a sense that, if he was dead, will they still fight in his name? Ho Fang leads a cult of insane people trying to bring about a god that will rule over the entire world. So quite okay. Sorry, because who's the and, picture and, that's on the screen right now? Uh, that is Ho Fang. So yes, this is a this is a problem that the the law won't solve, and even if they did, the law in Shanghai doesn't work the way you think it does, unless you think it's totally corrupt. We saw them kill people on the street, so I don't expect much from them. Well, that's what these people are fighting against. And he kind of raises voices like, you know, and he basically yells out like New China, which seems to be the only phrase in English they understand. And they all kind of like raise their fists and yell New China. I, I don't speak Chinese, so I won't be able to convince them of anything. Yeah. But these folks, they may look ragtag, but um, in the war, I uh, I learned a few things in the in the Marine Corps, and I've uh, passed that information along. So they might look like a bunch of ragtag farmers and students. But uh, they've been through boot camp. Okay. How do we deal with this? Deal with what? Do we have any... Oh, Fang. Break into his place and kill him. Um, I agree, but just kicking down the door if he has a private army will not be enough. Since your fi freedom fighters are not willing to freedom fight. Because, uh, excuse me if I'm wrong, everyone, but I think we're, like, the leads we had for Shanghai all leads to Ofang. We have nothing else here. If we want to stop uh, uh, whatever is happening in Shanghai, we need to stop Ofang. But just charging in, I don't think will work. Yeah. <clears throat> and if charging in was the answer, I'm sure all of these Tommy guns would be far more effective than my cane and I. <laughs> Unfortunately, these assholes don't want to come. They want to focus on the mission, deal with 
Grey Dragon Island. They don't. I'm sure you'll find someone else with a big gun who wants to go with you. Why are they focused on Grey Dragon Island? Aubrey's up to something there. That is something we should stop too. Yes. Yes. Sorry to order this in a way that makes sense. Do you think if we, if whatever is happening on Grey Dragon Island was stopped, they would be willing to out with Ofang? Maybe, but we're nowhere near ready for Grey Island. And the longer, if, if I don't respond, Ho Fang is going to kill my girlfriend. Yes. So. So whether, whether these assholes come with me or whether you guys come with me, doesn't matter. But tomorrow I am going to Ho Fang's. I'm willing to help, but not to kick down the door. We need a we need a, a an angle on him. How about I kick down the door and you guys go in and rescue her? Is there anywhere Ofang would be that we could get a line of sight on him? It's holed up in his fortress. He sometimes goes to his warehouse. Because we're not an army either. I mean, Luther's got his arm withered by uh, Galligan. He had to leave us. It's as close as we had to an army. Maybe if I can get a line of sight to him, could do something about him. Maybe, possibly. Just need to engineer that situation. Well, as long as you engineer quickly. I know, I know. I just don't know the guy enough to... Okay, where is Fortis located and what does it look like? He gives you the address. It's, it's, it's one of the many kind of private, well-guarded estates in Shanghai. You've, uh, you've, the, the, general, the general layout is like a, a three meter tall fence, usually topped with a barbed wire or spikes to prevent people from climbing. Is there any tall building nearby that we could uh, access? Shanghai does not have tall buildings. Tall-ish building? Nope. Shanghai is like... A, the tallest building in Shanghai is like three stories. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 being on top of the building, a three-story building... If we, The point is, I'm trying to get a line of sight on the guy. Uh, there's nothing nearby. The The homes are deliberately built to be fortresses. Yes. Brilliant. That's a mess. So, I am not going to give him the opportunity to kill Choi Ming. Anybody has an idea how we could do this? Other than leading a group of this battle. 
hungry crew? Well, they want this new China thing. They want to fight, take the fight to his neighborhood. Have whoever it is you're fighting against chase you toward his house. And if you're quite fortunate, he'll get hit in the crossfire. Well, he won't come out, but it might cause enough of a distraction that we can get in. Or well, I'm quite sure that, well, enough of those bullets would get through the walls. I'd rather not shoot indiscriminately at the walls, I'm trying to rescue I understand. somebody. Yes. But if you can cause a distraction, perhaps we could do something to help get her out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is good. Um, these guys don't want to do a direct assault on Ho Fang, um, but a fight in his area could work just as well. Um, so yeah, so he'll take like basically some of the shot glasses and he'll kind of like do like a little like a little map on the table with the shot glasses representing different, you know, buildings. Um, so Ho Fang's, Ho Fang's place, it is a mansion. Uh, it is, uh, it is walled. Um, it, it comprises a couple of buildings, actually. I think two, two separate buildings, little garden area. Um, he has some guards, uh, but if there's a distraction, we might be able to sneak in and find her. Yeah, I like I like your plan there, uh, Miss Collins. Yeah, that's distraction is much easier to convince these guys to do than uh, than an actual fight. That's the best that I have. Well, feel free to talk with yourself. I'm gonna I'm gonna go talk to the guys and see if they uh, if we can come to some sort of agreement on this. I mean, they do owe me somewhat for training them and. Hooking them up with an arms dealer. Well, if you could um, help me with a piece of equipment, if I can have a line of sight with him, I probably can neutralize him. What do you need for equipment? Uh, Doctor Lara's car is gonna write on a piece of paper the 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 model of a of a, a rifle. Okay. That he knows and that I don't. <laughs> okay. Evelyn is looking at Dr. Carter with a whole new version of alarm. Yeah, yeah, this is good. I uh, use, this is what I use when I was in service. we're going to be sneaking in at all, I would appreciate some form of a firearm just in case I need to defend myself. I can I can do that for you, certainly do you. What do you need? Rifle, shotgun, pistol? Thompson? Yes. yes. All right. Uh, what about you, uh, Miss Collins? I don't want to presume that you're going to sit behind, but maybe you will. Just get her a couple of grenade. <laughs> so I can hang out with them, blow myself up. I was, I was being facetious. <laughs> That'd be but grenade would, <laughs> but grenade would help. But grenade would help. Slightly better with a rifle. I. I... I'm not reliable with a rifle in any great measure. I might hit with one out of every four shots right. if I'm very fortunate. 
So if you have a dozen rounds, that's three on target. I suppose, if you look at it that way. I'd have someone else carry it for me, because they're a bit heavy. All right. So, some weaponry for a friend here, rifle for uh, for the doctor. All right. Explosive, just in case we need to make a distraction. I'm worse at throwing than I am at shooting. Just so you know. <laughs> All right. Well, sit sit here, put together a, a list of what items you might need. I'm going to go talk to these people and see if I can't convince them. Call it a training exercise. And uh, provided you live through the night, we'll uh, deal with Mr. Hofang tomorrow. Yes. And if I, if I don't make it through, uh, my friend, uh, my friend that uh, these two met, and he gestures to uh, Alvin and uh, and Miles, my friend at the house, the one with the scroll, he should be finished it in five or six days. Hopefully, that will provide us the information that we need uh, to uh, see this through. If I don't make it. Go to him. He'll know you. I just don't want to, you know, no sense in saving the world if you can't be with the one that you love, right? If you're going to fight for something, you got to make it sure it's worth fighting for. All right. And then he goes off to talk to the folks, leaving you guys to... Uh, Discuss amongst yourselves. I know this is Arsh, but if we don't put a stop to this Ofang, we're going to have to deal with that R every night until it gets us. <clears throat> it certainly looks that way. I don't and if we just let good. him go alone, he's just going to get killed and we're, we won't be better off. Well, does that uh, does that count as big game, Miles? What this guy? Oh, Fang. Mm. That depends if he's got something that's pup that's puppet mastering him behind the scenes. Otherwise, mm, we shall see. I feel he might be trying to call some creature if he feels threatened. That's reasonable. My one we, concern is that the whole point of this group was to deal with one specific thing, and we seem to be interested in going after side things in the hopes that it's part of the grander puzzle. I mean, Ofeng is definitely directly involved. Mm -hmm. Ofeng is the cog of Shanghai. He received the pieces from the Penyu Foundation. Uh, he's definitely part of the whatever we're trying to stop right now. He's one of the cog we definitely need to put an end to. I wish there was a more elegant way of dealing with him, but I don't see one. No, we know all of these things are related. Well, we have a couple more pieces of why those things are related. And who are the actors in that great scheme? Um, 
think so, we need to check so, up on uh, that. Uh, more, but, so I would like to ask one simple question. And yes, I would like a simple answer for this. At the end of the day, what is the final ultimate one objective of this group? One objective. Is it to avenge the death of a friend? Is it to discover what exactly happened to him, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. What is the goal of this group? My one concern is that we're going to go off on a million tangents to suddenly try to save the world from every small little thing. What is the ultimate goal of this group? Okay, I'm going to try to give a simple answer to that. But in my mind, we're trying to stop the, the great destruction that those who kill Elias are putting in motion. Whatever we can do to stop whatever they're doing, and I think we are accomplish what we were aiming for, what we promised Elias to do. What did Elias want you to do exactly? Finish his work. Which is what? He was investigating those cults to make a book to try to get them stopped. I don't think the book way of doing things will work. But I think we can stop them in a different way. I don't want to stop every cult. I don't want to stop every scheme. But from what uh, we learn, they're trying to raise their god. And that w that does not bode well for us and for, for the world. I'm not sure Elias knew exactly what he was trying to stop, but we're s starting to get a better idea of what it was. Is stopping the end of the world concise enough? Follow my investigation to its bloody end and seek out the truth. That's what he asked us to do. That's what I'm going to finish. <clears throat> To follow my investigation to its bloody end and seek out the truth is what Jackson asked of us. And I would like to. And now that I'm the target of something, I would like to also make that stop. I'd like to prevent them from summoning their dog god. Well, that too. But that's more along the lines of what Jackson is directly asking us to do. But getting rid of this hunting horror, that would certainly help me live long enough to do the rest of it. Yeah, definitely. And the fact that Ho Fang is part of this entire thing is just gravy. Meaning he's a cog that we need to stop if you want the old machine to alt. Essentially. Gra gravy implies he's a bonus and not the priority. He's trying to kill me. I consider that a priority. Maybe you don't, and I can understand that. You don't know me very well. I would like to live to next week. I think if we want to stop this old thing, we need to stop Ofang. So I don't think it's accessory to stop him. But also, from what I heard, um... Brady say, he destroyed the eye on the pyramid that prevented them from 
summoning their god. So if we Roger, could understand Roger. what it was, what was destroyed, maybe we could fix that, like we did in Peru. Reestablish symbols mm -hmm. and protect the world from whatever they're trying to summon. Rebuild the eye. Fill it back in with gold. He said he had a piece of it. I'd like to look at it and check if it has a, a gold inlay or something. Mm. See if it's the same kind of deal as in Peru. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing I think he said, like he gave us a bunch of information about different cult and different part of this great machine trying to summon their god into existence. But the fact that this eye was preventing it, preventing them from doing it, I think it's a big part. Also, Roger would be in town and under care. Roger is mm. in Hong Kong, not Shanghai. Hong Kong, sorry. So maybe because he was involved, he knew what he did. Now that he'd come back to his senses, maybe he could answer some question about the eye. Could certainly look into that as well, yes. But Mr. Brady said he had a piece of the eye. I'd like to see it and try to make sense of it. But I think stopping Ofang is not optional. If we want to stop their great plan. I understand what you want from us, uh, Mr. Franklin. Like a clear plan, like our end goal. What I see as our end goal is preventing that great summoning to take place. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure, but because the problem is if there are all these branches of the same cult that requires Well, as you guys uh, contemplate, we'll call it there, knowing that Jack, at the very least, plans to hit Ho Fang, like, tomorrow morning. He does not seem to be a man who is going to let his, uh, his beloved suffer. Uh, giving you guys precious little time to come up with a plan that does not involve kicking in the door. Uh, thankfully, Evelyn... <laughs> Evelyn did uh, fairly quickly come with the idea of like, no, 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 distraction, which seems to work. Well, my thought was shoot enough bullets through the walls and one side or the other is bound to hit. And then I went, oh, yeah, but his girlfriend's in there. He's probably not going to like that very much. Probably not. Uh, okay, can you just put on crappy, crappy uh Crappy costumes like in G.I. Joe and sneak in or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that would work. You can certainly try. I mean, Alvin might be good at disguises, but I don't know if he's that good. All right. Hey, Snake Eyes did it with the dog once. I'm <laughs> sure like, how hard could it be? I mean, I do have the G.I. Joe role playing game, and that's totally plausible, but. I am not playing G.I. Joe role-playing game. Just am... going to put that out there right now. Not happening. Play it without me. I appreciate I mean, I the might, fact... But not in the, in the Call of Cthulhu game, please. <laughs> I, I appreciate that the company has a G.I. Joe game, a Transformers game, a Power Rangers game, and then they did a crossover source book. Of course they did. All right. So I'll... Uh, I'll... Click on uh, development phase and everybody can roll to recover uh, luck points because you may need them next week. Oh, yeah. I'd like my luck back, please. 
<laughs> now let's do it. Come on. Um, Lucky button. Sorry for the sound earlier. I didn't see the message on Discord. I don't see I'm, I'm not in haze. Just rent normal luck right now. Sorry, I clicked development by accident. Uh, no worries, I can fix that. Uh, but yes, we will uh, we will pick up next week as uh, <laughs> you guys uh, figure out what's going on with Ho Fang. Um, I did post the um, uh, in Foundry. All of uh, Jack's story is available for you to look through. It's also up on the Google Drive for you guys to take a look at if you have any questions, because I know it was a lot of story that he dumped on you. I was typing so much. I was typing pretty faithfully until we got to the fire of vampires. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Um, but yeah, there is a there is a lot of information in there and probably more to come. Shang Shanghai is where you really get the feel for oh, shit, this is what's happening. <laughs> So, uh, so we will pick this up next week, and uh, we'll see folks tomorrow for Forbidden Lands. Yes. Yes. Slightly, slightly safer. Slightly. Um, slightly. <laughs> Ever so slightly safer. All right. So have a good night, folks, and uh, we'll see folks tomorrow. Good night, guys. Take care, everybody. Good night, good night. everyone.